Okay, good morning. I want to uh, first begin with our targets for this class. Um, they are, I will, understand the role of the Electoral College plays in the election of the president. We're going to focus most of the class on this. Uh, number two, we're going to be able to describe the qualifications for the president. And number three, we're going to understand that the framework for the Ohio Constitution complements the federal structure of the national government. I can pretty much guarantee we will be doing the first two. I doubt sincerely we will get to the um, third, um, but who knows? We'll see. All right, so moving on. To start off with, I want you to note uh, Article 2, Section 1. It has to do with the executive branch. The executive branch enforces the laws. It is in charge of making sure we follow the laws. So the head of the executive branch we know is the president, but there is more to the executive branch than just the president. You have any of the agencies that are responsible for enforcing laws um, are part of the executive branch. For example, the FBI, the CIA, um, the local police, any number of different groups that are responsible for enforcing a law are all part of the executive branch. But to begin with, we're going to focus in on the president and the election of the president. So number one, you need to know that um, Clause 1 basically states that uh, the title of the president also includes chief executive. And if you are aware, the title also includes um, the president also is commander in chief of the military. So he has three different titles he uses. Um, so back to number one, establishes the title of chief executive and define the term of the office for the president. In other words, president has a four year ter term once he's elected. He um, has a two term limit, means he can only be elected twice. Now that was a tradition up until the 22nd amendment. And the 22nd Amendment occurred right after Franklin Roosevelt, who served four terms. He was a president for the time. He was the president during World War II. And up until that time, though, the tradition was two terms. But he changed that. And because of that, people got pretty concerned that one president might become so popular that he might end up becoming a dictator. So they put the two term limit in for a reason. All right, so in turn, and also then, this, the clause two establishes what is known as the electoral college. This was a compromise between um, the different groups in Congress um, or at, in the uh, constitutional um, convention because some wanted the president to be elected by the vote of Congress meaning just them, not the people, and others wanted the president to be voted by a popular vote, which would be by the people. So they came up with a compromise and decided that they needed to be able to do both. They needed to have the popular vote, but they also needed to represent each state. And so they came up with the Electoral College. I'm going to go into greater explanation of that. Okay, so the electors um, are, uh, who will represent the Electoral College, the electors are chosen by popular vote. And we're going to see how that happens because that is actually, the popular vote is actually what's happening on uh, the general uh, election day in November. All right, let's move on. So we're going to begin to work on understanding the Electoral College. So we have a formula here that they use. The number of representatives, which is the number of districts a state has, or parishes, or depending on the state, they, they're divided in different ways. In Ohio, we call them districts. Plus the number of senators, and that's always two, equals the number of electors. So in Ohio, we have 16 representatives, plus two equals 18. So keep that formula in mind, we're gonna talk about it. Now, for those of you who are watching this, you, I cannot show this YouTube in this uh, particular um, situation because it's a copyrighted YouTube video. So you need to go in and um, 
click on this, or I'm, I'm not even sure you can click on it. You may have to um, physically write in this address or copy and paste this address into uh, YouTube to watch about the Electoral College. It's a good video, well worth your time to watch. So, in an explanation, we're talking about how the president is voted on. So, I'm going to go here. Here's a map of the United States, including Alaska and Hawaii. And you should see numbers all the way around uh, in all the states. These are the numbers of the Electoral College. They are the numbers based on the population of each state. If you'll notice, we already noted this, in Ohio, this is there we have the number 18 because that is the number of our representatives and that plus our senators and of course the number of representatives are based on our population right so you can also see that in california they have 55 they are the largest the next is texas 39 and then it looks like our next one is florida uh, new york pennsylvania um those all have in, in illinois large numbers but we also um, consider this um, 18, um, Ohio, and is also considered a large state. Now, if you watched the video, you would have seen they talked about safe states, those states that are traditionally for um, one party or another, the Republican or the Democratic Party, and the swing states. Swing states are those states that can go back and forth between different candidates, just depending on the situation. Ohio is significant because it is considered a primary swing state. That in Florida, both of these two are considered extremely important in that these often, these two states are often the states that identify where the country is going. Um, and where or who will be the president. All right, so let's look at this. This is the election for the electoral for 2016, right? You can see if you take a look how big a difference this is um, in terms of colors. Looks primarily red in truth. But for the, to understand the Electoral College, when you vote, you're voting to tell the people who are representing you in the Electoral College who, what candidate you want them to vote for. Okay, so you can see, let's just keep talking Ohio. You can see Ohio, when we voted, we voted our 18, because that was a majority vote, we voted our 18 to vote for Donald Trump. Okay. Now, that doesn't mean the whole population of Ohio voted for Donald Trump. It just means the majority in that state voted for Donald Trump. Okay. Now, in looking at this, you can see that in California, 55 voted for Hillary. But, again, it's the same thing. That doesn't mean all of the people in California voted for Hillary. Some voted for Donald. Just like in Ohio, some voted for Hillary. Right? But the majority voted for Hillary Clinton. And so the, 50, the total 55 votes then went to Hillary. Now that's a significant number. That's not a small number. That's a significant number. All right. Now, I want to go back for just a second to a website here. Uh, I believe it's this one. Let me click on it. Yes. All right. So this is a great site because it tells people, um, it kind of shows how the states voted. And of course, what you can see here is this is by time, by 7 p.m., which is when the, um, the uh, 
doors closed Eastern Standard Time, okay, by 7 o'clock, these states had pretty much already identified who was winning. And of course, you can see at this point, Donald Trump. He won in Georgia, Indiana, Kentucky, and South Carolina. Uh, Virginia and Vermont had voted for Hillary. And so if you're looking to, if you're starting to look just by 7, by 7 o'clock, 7.30, Donald has a pretty significant uh, uh, lead. But by 8 o'clock, you can see Hillary now is coming back and making a significant jump. Now, again, when you're looking at these day, these, this information here, you are looking at the total number then, and they're giving her the total number of um, electoral colleges, um, candidates, not candidates, sorry, electors um, will vote for Hillary, right? Now, you can see, um, uh, this is a good one right here. This is uh, Maine, 100%. Hillary won by 48, but Donald by 45. But it still goes to Hillary, even if it's that close. Okay. And you can look it through, uh, throughout all of them. That's, there's similar things uh, for both sides. Please excuse the interruption. Um, at this time, we're going to release the freshman class, freshman students and teachers. There are booths in the high school gym and also in the commons area that you can visit. So make sure you visit as many as you can. So at this time, please send the freshman students down until 945. Thank you. All right. So then as you move on, again, uh, now we're getting at 9 o'clock. By 9 o'clock, um, Donald had already received 270 and must receive 270 um, of the total ballots in order to be considered president. Um, Hillary only earned a total then, when this is, this is when it was all said and done. Um, Trump had received 306 and Hillary had received only 232 done here. However, the interesting thing or the controversial thing is what I really should say. The controversial thing was that the actual numbers for uh, the election, and I lost my numbers, hang on. Give me a second. All right, the actual numbers was Hillary received 65,844,610 votes, popular votes. Donald received 62,979,636 votes. So Donald did not win the popular vote, but he won the electoral college. Hillary won the, elect, uh, the popular vote, but lost the electoral college which is why there's so much controversy around this election, why so many people believe Donald does not deserve, Donald Trump does not deserve the election. Yet, according to our law, this is exactly what he did. He has the election. He is now president. All right, let me get back to... our map. Now, the thing that I want you to pay attention to, because the, the issue, of course, is looking at the map. The majority of the nation, in terms of land, the majority in, in terms of uh, area, went to Donald Trump. The areas that tended to go to Hillary were the coast, some of the coast countries, or uh, sorry, states, which you can see right here on the west coast. You can see Colorado and New Mexico. But over here then in New England was a big, and of course, large population, large population, uh, again, a large population, all of these um, then would be uh, Hillary's. But and then in terms of area, look at the area of the country went towards Donald. Okay. All right, so. The thing you want you to remember, first of all, is how the electoral college, the formula for electoral college, 
number of districts plus the number of senators equals the number of your um, uh, number of your representatives to the electoral college. In this case, Ohio is 18. Okay, that's primary. Then I want you to remember that you've got, um, and actually I'll go into this in a little greater detail next class, that they have to have 270. So whoever gets the 270 first wins the presidential election. All right, we're going to stop right there.